Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Haley. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas to yeah. one and all. You're listening to the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, sponsored by Benjamin Moore. It's our Christmas extravaganza. We've got all kinds of stuff planned, and I'm going to be very honest right up front. It's all about Christmas. Yeah, very little of this has anything to do with home improvement stuff. So if you're here for home improvement tips and how to paint something, probably not your gig today. Yeah, there's really only tools talked about in the snowman yes. section. So Tools you'll need to build a snowman. <laughs> so if that's piquing your interest, hang around. But anyway, everything that we're going to talk about is going to yeah. be fun. That's the point. But before we get to all of that fun stuff, we've got an early Christmas present we want to give out. We have a contest going on Right now, if you go to RepcoLite.com, click the banner on the homepage, you can find the entry form and the rules. We're giving away $500 to RepcoLite to one lucky winner. But that person will also get $500 to RepcoLite to gift to a friend and $500 to give to a charity of their choice as well. Now, entering the contest is easy. You go to RepcoLite.com and you have to answer questions. We've given out clues all month long. We're going to give you the clues for the first three weeks right now right in order. So, starting with week one's question, what is Dan's favorite Christmas movie as a kid? Here's your clue. Week two, what is Haley's favorite Christmas cookie? Not my gumdrop buttons! Okay, that's week two's question, so go and answer that. Week three's question last week is, what love it, hate it Christmas song is this? want. Never mind. I can't give you that out. You've got the clue. Go to <laughs> RepcoLite.com. You don't want me to sing the rest of that anyway. No. Go to RepcoLite.com. Click the banner on the homepage. Answer questions one through three and then make sure you hang around to the show and we'll give out the last question and last hints. All right. With all of that business out of the way, let's get into the Christmas extravaganza wholeheartedly. And really, I wish I had dressed a little more festively. I should have worn a hat or some sort of oh, festive yeah, gear. Oh yeah, we could have been festive. Yeah, we didn't. Haley wore a sweatshirt. Well, I'm green. I mean, that's... Well, I'm wearing a sweater. Oh, oh, so uh, real quick. Okay. I've got Hannah at home. Yeah. She's 15, mm -hmm. I think. Pretty sure. 14, 15? She's one of those ages. She's yeah. right in that zone, right in that <laughs> butter zone. And anyway, Maddie, my older daughter, she has all this ridiculous clothing that she buys. Wow, nice. that I know, I know. She knows it. She calls it her grandma clothes, but she's got these sweaters and stuff, and she loves geese and ducks and sure. things like that, yeah. so she's got a sweater with a duck on it. Anyway, Maddie does. She she knows they're a little bit ridiculous, but there's certain things that yeah. she just really loves, and yeah. she loves her duck sweater. That's awesome. Anyway, the other day, Hannah was asking her where her duck sweater is and if she could wear it to school, and so Maddie is all excited, and yeah. she gets it out, and brings it in and says, oh, why geez. do you want it? And Hannah says, we have an ugly sweater contest. <laughs> oh, my god! Oh, my goodness. Yes, dead silence at the table. Hannah. Yeah, Hannah doesn't think so all the time. She is <laughs> <laughs> honest to a fault. Yeah. Anyway. Gotta love it. I, how did I get there? Oh, Christmas garb. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing a sweater. Not an ugly sweater. Or a Christmas sweater, but a sweater. No, it's a sweater. It means it's cold outside, and so I'm representing <laughs> We want to talk about snowmen on the Repcolite Christmas extravaganza yes. and the history behind them because it's right. They're surprisingly than we might think. ancient, actually. Yeah. Um, but you were going to say anxious. Oh. I'm anxious. anxious. Snowmen are chill. <laughs> okay. Uh <-huh. laughs> All right, go with it. I'm going to let that one go. I know. Uh, so archaeologists actually theorized that cavemen were probably making some sort of snow sculpture. Okay. Now, um, see, that's a ridiculous claim to begin with. <laughs> we don't have evidence, obviously, because they melt. But the idea is that because they were using other materials at the time that were readily available to make art, like cave paintings, and they made small sculptures out of like mud and sticks, mm -hmm. snow is probably not lost on them as a material readily available to make things out of. So... Most likely, there were things being made in caveman times. Even. All right, but we have not found anything frozen frozen in the ice bed. No, <laughs> like little charcoal eyes or something. And like, like a that. carrot with like some little sticks next to it. Carrot. Oh, this yeah. must have been left over from a snowman. No, none of that. None of that. We're just guessing none of that. based on. Well, and really, we wouldn't see that because. Our idea of a snowman and what it's supposed to look like now, like Frosty the Snowman, mm -hmm. does not actually take hold until the 1940s. And we'll get to that. Okay. But the first evidence that we have of a snowman is in 1380. There was an illustration that was published. 
And that's the very first time that we have a record of a snowman. In the year 1380. Yes. We have, in what form was this published? In like, I don't know, some publication. Well, right. Damn. But I mean, what was the, <laughs> was the point the snowman or was it no, just kind of an off? It was just like, kind of like an off, you know. But like we a, know that was a snowman. Yes. Yeah. It was very clearly a snowman. And people it, are making like snowmen. Writing about it. All right. So where do we go from there? So from there, we don't get, you know, photographic evidence until later, but we do know that they were being used really as a folk art in the 1500s even. So in the Middle Ages, people were using snowman even to actually protest things. Okay. They were being used in political nature because people didn't have, well, I mean, some people couldn't read or write. So they didn't have a lot of resources to communicate their ideas. And here's so this wait till winter, free material right? for them to sculpt things out of, and they could say whatever they wanted. See, if I were you know, in the political hierarchy, sure. I would have not done anything potentially protest-worthy hmm. in the cooler seasons. See how I would have avoided all of these protests? I would have only done my— Sure, your dirty work in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. Try to make a snowman <laughs> now, right? <laughs> I would have been smart. <sighs> Nothing questionable in the winter. It's all nope. oranges for everybody, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Bribe them all. All right. But but people <laughs> didn't think that far ahead. Right. They weren't thinkers like no. I am. And the political figures of the time mm -hmm. made mistakes in the winter. And, and people were pretty vocal about it. People got vocal with snowmen. Yeah. But they were a real folk art, too. People took it pretty seriously as an art form. Okay. They were legitimate sculptures. Like, and would they have competitions? Or would they just do this on? I think anyone would do it. But artists like Michelangelo, for example, was known to practice in snow because, again, it was a free material. Here's something that he can make some carvings out of. Mm -hmm. And he was actually commissioned by someone to make a fancy snow sculpture. You're not going to tell us that he's the first one to use coal for eyes and a carrot no, for a nose. That'd no. be really awesome. Just but we do have so you know. um, some images that we'll put in the YouTube video and that we can link to. Of Michelangelo snowman? Of, not of his, but there's another artist um, that carved things out of snow. Da uh, Vinci? Larkin Mead. And I guess he's okay. known for a sculpture that he made for a Lincoln Memorial in Springfield. Out of snow? No. Oh. That's a real thing. Okay. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> but he got... To the position and notoriety to be able to make that yeah. by making really impressive snow sculptures. He got so much publicity that he ended up getting commissioned to make real sculptures out of, you know, stone. Out of real things. Yeah. Okay. So th that's snow sculptures. Are we still calling that snowmen? Yeah. Was it people? They were still making people. Okay. Yes. So you said it. they didn't look like our snowmen Right. Today. They were like realistic They're sculptures. They're realistic. Yeah. And so we don't have photos because it's the 1500s. Well, they didn't have Instagram right. or the TikTok. But we have some illustrations from back then. Okay. And then we do have photographs starting to appear. And they do depict people making, you know, whole families of realistic looking people. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, so we'll put links in the show notes to these other pictures. Yes. So we these can illustrations. Do that. So or check out the that. YouTube. Folk art, they're using it to convey images and ideas and concepts. Yes. They're protesting with their snowmen. Right. But all of that kind of gets ruined when Frosty the Snowman comes around. Because that's really when our current idea and understanding of the snowman begins. Okay. So that, that did not exist until Frosty comes right. about. And when did Frosty come about? So it dates back to a book that was written that was about a traveling snowman. And he wasn't called Frosty in that book. He was actually called Snowy the Snowman. Even more creative. <laughs> but yeah, that book was pretty popular. And then it wasn't until like the 1950s where we start seeing that in like small shorts and in film. So that's when really the idea took off. And that's when snowmen became like three balls on top of each yep, other. Yep, with like the with corn cob pipe and the coal eyes and the carrot nose. That's when all that started. Is that how you've made snowmen? Do you ever really, really go all out and create I've the traditional made, coal? Yeah, and well, not with coal, but stones. I'll use things that look like coal. Yes. You know, carrot Lava nose. Lava rocks. I've actually had the corn cob pipe in a snowman's oh, mouth before. I've gone wow. all out. Yeah. 
put a little scarf on your snowman. Oh yeah, a little top hat. Do you remember last year you brought me out? There's a house right near our studio. There was a giant snowman. Yeah. Yes. Well, and I think that's really kind of cool because I really think we should go back to what they started as. This is the only time in our lives, probably, that we get to make life-size sculptures for free. Oh, that's very true. You know, I like forever. That. <laughs> right. No, that can How be a often? lot of fun. Right. I've made dragons and I've made, well, I made a dragon. Let's be honest. Dragons? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it really didn't look like a dragon. I had to tell everybody that's a dragon. Sure. But in my heart. It was a dragon. It was a dragon. No, I think that we don't take advantage of, you know, the possibilities with a snowman as much as we could. All right. You know, we're very stuck on the frosty image. All right. So we can make them cooler than that. I think we that. can go back to what they did before. All right. So you mentioned, and you told us at the beginning of the show, you've got a minute left. You mm-hmm. talked about tools that you were going to recommend yes. for this whole process. What do you got for us? So if you're going to make a more realistic looking snowman, there are some things that you might want to have around just to help you, you know, carve and sculpt a little bit more. So a screwdriver would be one of them, a file, mm-hmm. if you're really packing that snow down and now you got to smooth out some edges to get it just right. Putty knife would work. Yeah. Sandpaper, actually. Sandpaper? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can sand the, the snow down. Get the non-clogging. Buff or the, it out. Right. You want the sandpaper that can be used wet yes, or dry. exactly. Um, oh, really? That's just being ridiculous. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, okay. That's well, true. there we go. <laughs> Bing. Dan gets another one Good right. Good job, Dan. <laughs> what else? But even like a spray bottle to mist the snowman. Yes. If it's not, you know, packing well enough or if you're kind of wanting to undo something without wrecking something else just to melt the snow a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, we'll put links in the show notes to some of those illustrations we talked about. Yeah. A list of the tools and all of that stuff. Now, all right. We were going to take a break and talk about Christmas traditions. But before we go, Haley, do you have any traditions at your house that you're incredibly attached to? I think my favorite tradition that we've always done and I still do it is hiding a pickle ornament yep, on I've the tree heard about this. and then you have to find the pickle Christmas day and the person that finds it first is the one that gets to open the first present. Hold that thought Haley. We're going to take a break. When we come back we'll finish talking about that tradition and then we'll dig into Christmas traditions from around the world. That's all just ahead. Stick around. We're back. You're listening to the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, sponsored by Benjamin Moore. And this is the Christmas special, it right? It is, yeah. So this is not your normal Repco Light Home Improvement Show. We're not going to talk about, you know, dealing with a leaky faucet or mold and mildew in the bathroom. Now, hopefully people are able to enjoy their Christmases <laughs> and you're not doing a renovation right now. <laughs> we, we, we debated. We made that joke, remember? We were talking about Christmas con- or um, Christmas jobs we could hand out to people. Yes. And we decided that was really, really, really not the way to go with this. I don't think so. We decided to have fun. So we're talking about some world Christmas traditions, right? Am I right on that? World Christmas traditions. Exactly. And we ended last segment talking about your specific tradition of hiding the pickle or something like that. And you mentioned it's an older tradition and your family employs it, at least to some extent. I know I've heard about this whole pickle thing. Why don't you just run through it one more time? Yeah, because our version of that is a little bit different. I don't think we do the tradition right. <laughs> <laughs> the original one, I think, is probably even more different. But So you're hiding the pickle typically, wrong? Well, we're hiding the pickle. That can't necessarily be done wrong. The present part, I think, is what we do wrong. Okay. It's supposed to be a separate present. Like, the pickle is associated with a specific gift. Like a really good bonus gift. Right. And whoever gets the pickle gets the bonus gift. But we do it as you just get to open the first present. Like, Oh, yeah. Your parents didn't want crying. <laughs> <laughs> Someone gets and, more. Yeah. And that's not a wrong decision. But yeah, man, it's that, been adjusted that for pickle families. would be a lot more valuable if that was a bonus gift. It's true. So that's yeah. how it is in Germany. I that think the original. that's, I don't know if it's the original original, because even the origins of the pickle um, are debated. Well, yeah. Some people think it's from Germany and that it dates back to the 16th century. Some people argue that it's actually from Spain and that it had to do with children that were kidnapped and put into pickle barrels. So, Well, that's really yeah, dark. Really dark. <laughs> a lot of these Christmas traditions are crazy dark. They are. It's very strange. I would associate them more with Halloween than I would with Christmas. 
this. It's pretty interesting. Well, I certainly don't understand the pickle thing. I've seen it. I've seen the little pickle ornaments. And, yes. and that was my first introduction to it. I saw pickle ornaments. What the I heck thought, is this for? This is a real bonehead <laughs> Christmas, you know, at that house. You know, they must love Heinz. But... No, I know. I see it's a tradition, but... Yes. And a really old one. Yeah, I mean, 16th I, century. I don't get it. All right. So that's one, the pickle yeah. tradition. How about another one? So Krampus is something that's celebrated in Austria. If you um, eat the wrong foods, you get Krampus. <laughs> <laughs> and then you walk around hunched over. Is that? Well, maybe this creature is hunched over, but it's like supposed to be a ghoulish kind of creature, a scary creature. And it's like the evil accomplice of St. Nicholas. So well, why would St. Nicholas have an evil why accomplice? Why would he need that? I guess it was to punish the bad kids. So if you were on Santa's naughty list, Krampus or this ghoulish creature would come to visit you. And do what? Um... Scare you, kidnap you. I really? See, oh, you don't know. You're just making that up. You got me all excited. Maybe kidnap. I have no idea. He's probably got a pickle bag. <laughs> it's probably where barrel. all of this. Yeah. Oh, a pickle barrel. Yeah. <laughs> well, it could be a bag. Maybe some places don't have the money to have the big barrels. Well, now people don't you know, fully embrace the Krampus. That is so surprising. We're it not seems just so like, festive. You know, scaring and children just for the sake of no. you know punishing them but it is like a prank that they'll have now so people will dress up like Krampus like wear scary masks and walk around town pulling pranks and scaring people but like children and adults alike right it's I, not just for punishing it, bad kids the whole thing the, the whole prank thing I mean that that all seems insane to me Agreed. I would be afraid I'd kill somebody Right? That's what I always think of <laughs> like with these you pranks. You would take a prank too far? No, 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 no. Okay. The kids will show me this, you know, TikTok. Dad, watch this. This guy's going to jump out of a barrel and scare this lady. That lady doesn't look like she can take it. <laughs> what happens if she just keels flat over? Yeah, in the area of... Or in the era of lawsuits, I don't know. I, that's what I picture. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to put on a little Krampus mask, <laughs> jump out of a little box, and I'm going to watch mom just thump, and there goes Christmas for everybody for the rest of our lives. Yeah. I don't want to be a part of a Krampus Christmas. I don't either. And there's an annual parade associated with this event. Where was that one from again? That's in Austria. In Austria. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's very strange. We got time for really one more weird. in this segment. Okay. This one I really like because... I love cats. I okay. have a cat. Burger, this is a holiday for you. Iceland has a Yule cat. A Yule cat? <laughs> yeah. They don't burn them, right? No. Well, Yule logs, <laughs> right? We burn Yule True. logs. Um, <laughs> it's definitely one of the weirder ones, but I guess there's like um, this idea that there's a gigantic cat-like beast and... It would be incentive for their workers uh, to work really hard. <laughs> and okay. if you were uh, good, you would receive a new set of clothes. But if you weren't, you might be devoured by this gigantic cat. Does he have jingle bells on? Or is there any... <laughs> then you might hear him coming. Uh, okay, so... yes. So, okay, if I've got this straight, everybody is told... Hey, go out and work really hard, mm -hmm. or the Yule Cat's coming. Yeah. Well, I thought Christmas was coming. Well, with Christmas comes the Yule Cat. Yeah. And if you don't work hard, he's going to eat you. <laughs> That's the whole thing. That's the idea. Where's the fun? I. You get new clothes if you're good. Okay. <laughs> you're going to need them, because when I hear the Yule Cat's coming, my old <laughs> oh, clothes aren't going to be worth anything. I can't believe that that's a Christmas tradition. I know. I mean, there's a lot of good, fun stuff to draw from. You think? All right. All right. That's all the time we've got for this segment. Let's take a break, and we'll come back with more on the other side. Yeah, sounds we'll good. We'll be back in just a minute. Stay tuned. Well, Haley, we're working our way through a very strange mm -hmm. list of Christmas traditions from around the world. It's the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, believe it or not, and we're just kicking back. We're phoning it in. Yeah, it's is, Christmas, people. Right, right. It's Christmas. <laughs> and we debated. Let's come up with a new show for Christmas. Let's let's come up with, what, projects for people to do on Christmas Day, you know? Ways to organize the wrapping paper piles that are scattered everywhere. And we realized that is ridiculously stupid. Yeah. So we thought, let's just phone it in and have fun and talk about great Christmas stuff. We talked about our own Christmas traditions in the beginning. 
you know, things I like to do, some boring stuff Haley's uh-huh. family yeah, does. Yeah, coming. And yeah, yeah. And now we've kind of branched off into traditions from around the world and we've hit some very bizarre things. Yeah, I'm really excited that I found this list because it is truly bizarre. I just hope it's true. Have you cross-checked and cross-referenced this? Because just because the internet says it happens. <laughs> Yes, I have Googled most of these right. outside of the one article, and they do exist. All right. So we, we've got more because it's Christmas and we're just having fun. But I do want to give one quick warning. We do have one that's coming up that is absolutely hilarious. And, and we're still not sure. disgusting. Yes, we're still not sure how we're going to be able to broach the topic. <laughs> but I guess we'll all find out together. But oh, my goodness. Yeah. Where, where is that? What is that one called? We don't. You can't even say the name, right? No. Is it from Spain somewhere? Yeah, it's from Spain. We'll call it Spain's potty log. Should we just talk about it now? No. We we gotta... Okay, we'll save it for the end. All right. So what do you got next? We just came, went over the Yule cat, which you know, all the little workers who aren't working hard enough get munched down by the Yule cat and everybody sings... Jingle Bells or Feliz Navidad or something like that. Yeah. What's next? Uh, the next one, again, feels more like a Halloween tradition, but the Ukraine actually decorates with like spider webs, essentially. They're not like not with actual spider webs, but they're recreating what looks like spider webs on the tree with tinsel. Could I use real spider webs? I guess that's up My to you, My house is full of spiders, and apparently... If I were in the Ukraine, it would season, you know, all year round be decorated for Christmas. You would be really in style there. I would. So they decorate what with spider webs? Uh, Everything, the the corners up by the ceiling? I don't know if they're doing the whole house like that, but definitely at least on the tree. Okay, on the tree, spider webs. Using tinsel or, you know, other string to make it look like a spider web. Why? I guess there is this folk tale about a poor widow who couldn't afford to decorate the tree for her children. And the legend has it that the spiders in the house took pity on the family's plight and spun beautiful webs all over the tree. So when the children woke up, there were these beautiful spider webs with, you know, dew droplets on them. So it looked like a festive tree. And so now they've embraced it. Okay, I have decided That I will let that one stand. That is a Christmas tradition that I approve of. (laughs) And it can continue. (laughs) It can continue. Because that's a fun little story. No, I like that there's a story with it. And I'm sure the other ones probably have stories too. But this one um, was included. And I just, I think it's kind of nice. Well, And I'm sure they were very amazing webs. I'm sure they were beautiful. Maybe they wrote little festive sayings (gasps) like Charlotte. (gasps) Right? That would in be cool. Sh- Charlotte's Web, right? Didn't she write little yeah, sayings? Yeah, she would write like, things in her pig, webs. Like, or don't eat the pig. Don't eat the Which pig. Which one was it? I think it was definitely don't eat the pig. She liked the pig. She liked it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's a darker version of Charlotte's Web. <laughs> Where Wilbur, Wilbur gets Wilbur, yeah, he doesn't make it very oh far. Gosh. All right, so spider webs in the Ukraine. What's next? Where are we going next, Haley? Okay, I definitely want to get this one in um, because it's just bizarre. Japan doesn't really celebrate Christmas. It's okay. not like a national holiday for them like it right. is here. And yet they now celebrate Christmas because of a marketing campaign KFC came up with <clears throat> back in 1974. Seriously? Yeah. Yep. KFC is in Kentucky Fried Chicken. Exactly. They came up with a campaign that brought Christmas to Japan. To Japan. Yep. So now the way that people celebrate Christmas in Japan is by going and eating fried chicken. Really? Yes. That is a good campaign. Right? You You changed an entire country's culture. Why have we not done that with paint? Right? (laughs) Right? (laughs) We should have gone with the projects. Paint's not as good to eat as Kentucky Fried Chicken. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's not as good to eat. We don't recommend that. Not at all. Seriously. So there's no decorations or anything. It's just head out and eat chicken. Yep. All right. Where's next? Where are we going? Um, okay, Let's go to Italy. So Italy, yeah, this one again kind of draws on Halloween traditions. Instead of Santa, um, there's a witch that one visits witch? you. <laughs> she's called Belafana, if I'm saying that right. But she's an old woman. Spell it. B-E-L-F-A-N-A. Belfana. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. 
She fills the stockings of the children. It's just like Santa Claus. What does she fill them with? She comes down through the chimney and they get presents from her. What does she look like? Does she have a a witch? Well, some witches have beards. <laughs> I think that's like cool. she's got the little wart on her chin that she has does. a couple hairs coming out of it. Is There's it like, like a hat that is a traditional cone shape. Does she shake like a bowl full of jelly when she giggles? I is that part of being a witch? No, that's part of being Santa. <laughs> oh, okay, I see. Right? <laughs> Come on, it's Christmas. Maybe she's why witches? That's so strange. I know. How, how far back does this one go? Um, this one, they don't say. Okay, so we don't know exactly how far back this one goes, because we were no. burning witches in 1692. And yeah, Italy Salem. is making them their Santa Claus. Wow, that yeah. is so strange. Pretty interesting. All right, we've got time. Do we want to get to the big one? Let's go to Sweden first. Okay. And I can see that it says the Yule Goat. Yeah. And I'm sure this is extremely festive and we're going to really resonate with this one at least, right? Well, it's kind of strange. All right. Um, A little dark still even. Okay. And it's changed a lot over time. This actually dates back all the way to the 11th century. It's the oldest tradition on this list. Okay. And the original idea was that there was a man-sized goat figure led by Santa, St. Nicholas, who had the power to control the devil. Ho, 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 it's so bizarre. Why does Santa need a goat that controls the devil? Well, do you have the rest of the story? Do you know why? I don't know why. I'm on the edge of my seat, literally. (laughs) I'm so confused. Why is that? Yeah, well, they changed it over time. Okay. Um, What do they do now? Now it's really just like... This representation of a past um, tradition, it's really just like a festive goat that hangs as like an ornament on the Christmas tree. And Hmm. yeah, but there was a period of time even where people would dress up like goats instead of Santa. Like it was the main feature. What year were we talking again? This started in the 11th century. That's when it controlled the devil. And then in the 17th century, people started like dressing up like the goat. So the 1600s, they're dressing up like the goat in Sweden. Yep. And they would pull pranks on people like that. So it was like pranks are big. Controlled the devil, but was also a prankster. Remember when you recommended for Thanksgiving that people prank people with a whoopee cushion? True. Do you think that was happening back then? I wonder what they did. Did they have whoopee cushions? Probably like a pig's bladder. Oh, I yeah. I bet they could make that sound like a whoopee cushion. I bet cushion. Little House on the Prairie, they probably would have had a pig splatter whoopee cushion. <laughs> probably. <laughs> All right. Since we're, we've gone down to that level, let's go way further and deeper and lower and talk about the yeah. very last tradition that we had on our list. It's a real one. I did not believe it. I had to look it up. I found multiple stories yeah. about Spain's. There's a lot of different words to use for this. We have chosen... The word potty, potty because <laughs> I'm comfortable with that and I can roll with that. And I don't think we're going to be in any trouble about that. But it's called Spain's potty log and it is insane. And I'm so glad this is not part of my Christmas every year. It's twisted. It's really twisted. So how does it work? They it get a little log. It starts off innocent enough. The kids have the section of log, right? Like a small log. And they put a little face on it. It's got some sticks for legs. They take care of it. They feed the oh, log. Oh, yes. It's they, so you know, nice. It's under a blanket oh, to keep it warm. It, logs get cold at right? night. <laughs> it's like their little pet. But then yep. it gets weird because on Christmas. Because wait a minute. Because feeding a stick with a face <laughs> on it isn't weird. Well, that's, that's just like a pretend. Normal. Like. I don't know. No. Make dolls out of weird things. Compared to the rest of it, that part's That's standard. Totally That's normal. Yep. That's mainstream. Because then, then, what do they do? On Christmas, they beat the log with of sticks. Of course, of course. Because <laughs> that's what you do to something that you love and take care of. <laughs> and then they sing, or like, well, I mean, it's going to sound like a chant, but they asked the log to go potty for them. <laughs> right. Is that not insane? And they asked it to potty out presents. Yes, exactly. Nugget and candies. Make good potty for us. And if it doesn't, then they really beat it with the sticks and they throw it in their fireplace. (laughs) Now, that does sound like one Christmas that I was a part of. But 
you know, I don't want to go into that story. It was so horrible. No, it sounds horrible. <laughs> I'm joking. I've never been a part of anything like that. Have you heard of it? anything like that no. ever? No. Okay. Well, I don't think there's any more to say. I it's think we got through it. We did bizarre. it in an adult manner, and it's time to move on. We're going to take a break, play some commercials. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the tradition of the Christmas orange, and we're going to be giving out our last question and last clue for our big contest. You're going to want to catch all of that, so stick around. We'll be right back. And we're back. You're listening to the Christmas Extravaganza on the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, sponsored by Benjamin Moore. And we're having all kinds of fun. We've covered all kinds of old Christmas traditions from around the world. We've talked about snowmen. We're going to, at the end of this segment, give away the last clue for our great big Christmas contest that's going on right now through tomorrow. So you've got today and tomorrow to get all your entries in. We're going to give you clues for that coming up. But right now, we're going to talk about another interesting topic that Haley has said will blow our hair back. We're going to be so stunned to find out the history of the Christmas orange. There, Haley, I've set you up. I appreciate your sarcasm, Deliver, (laughs) Deliver the goods, just like St. Nicholas delivering the goods. Well, way to give it away. I didn't talk about oranges. All right. Well, there's a couple theories about where the whole orange and Christmas tradition comes from. Well, and first off, let's talk about that because you you are really excited. You told me about the whole Christmas orange tradition because well, you just, decorate with Christmas oranges. Yeah, or oranges. I really like decorating with them. You know, I cut them up, I put them in the oven, dry them out, make them into garland, and I just think it's a really pretty way to decorate for Christmas. And it's inexpensive. I mean. Mm-hmm. The DIY project. Hey, there we go. Oh, so now we're DIYing. (laughs) That make me a liar. But anyway, so yes. But also people get them in stockings, right? Like this is a classic. People used to get them in stockings. I think some people still do this. I was reading some blogs. There there are people out there. Okay. I don't think they're very popular people. No. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the people who give those aren't terribly, terribly well, well received. But it's a thing. It's okay. been a long-standing tradition. So let's talk about where it came from. Curious where it came from. There's a couple theories. There's not really any serious consensus about where it came from exactly. All right. Of course. <laughs> but the first theory, and probably the most likely, is that it relates to or stems from the generosity of Saint Nick, who is the inspiration behind Santa Claus, right? All right. So Saint Nick was a wealthy um well, he was the son of a wealthy merchant. I well, say maybe that. he was wealthy. No, I don't think he was. But anyway, well, he, he was, was the giving a lot son. of stuff away. So potentially, he started Taking off with it from <laughs> pops and handing it out. So yeah, but he lived down the road from a family that had fallen on hard times around Christmas, and so his idea was to go to this family's house at night, and through the open window, he threw bags of gold. Into all of the kids' stockings. Like he just slam dunked them? I guess so. He's got quite or, the arms. He didn't slam dunk them, but he sunk the shot yeah. Yeah. right into the, the stocking. Pretty impressive. That is impressive. So they wake I up. I would have hit the, ch- the children <laughs> as they're curled up on the wherever they are, Waiting. the floor well, or whatever. Santa wasn't a thing yet, I guess. So Yeah, they wouldn't have known to expect yeah. me coming and chucking gold at them. <laughs> so anyway, he dumps them into their stockings. Yes. They wake up the next morning. Oh! Oh, right. Thrilled. The father is trying to figure out where this came from, finally figures out that it was Nicholas and goes into the town and is just telling everyone how generous he is. Everybody's putting their stockings up at this point, right, I'm exactly. assuming. Exactly. But this is where the idea of Santa Claus, St. Nick, came from. All right. And it's also where potentially the idea of the orange in the stocking came from because the orange is said to represent the little bag of gold. Oh, it's a cheap out. Yeah. All but right. I think it's possible. It's nature's cheap out on a bag <laughs> of gold. But it's, it still works. Okay, yeah. so that's where you're thinking. They one, used to be one... pretty rare. So, I mean, sure. potentially it's right. like gold. It's not gold rare, but it's still rare. Yes. So that's one idea. Another idea. They represent the giving season. Oranges Because do. they can be broken up into sections and shared amongst your friends. Oh. Yeah. Well, there you go. Kind of nice. Yeah. It's a nice thought. Yeah, I'm going to buy bigger oranges. The only ones that we've got are the ones that are easy to peel. The little clementines yeah, or they're mandarin really tiny, oranges. So. 
<laughs> splitting those. I don't <laughs> know how much a... Christmas cheer is passed around, but it's the thought that counts, right? Yeah, it's not the quantity. Exactly, exactly. But I think the idea was really popularized during the Great Depression when, you know, we were looking for really cheap, simple gifts yeah. and oranges were super rare at the time. So they were probably the only thing that you got under the tree during that time. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Great Depression, great because it was big, not because it was so wonderful, right? Thanks Just for the clarification. <laughs> I want everybody to know that. I always struggled with that. Hmm. Why is everybody complaining if it was the Great Depression? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody had to explain that to me. Sadly, it was at Grand Valley, and oh I was much God. older than I should have been. Anyway, let's get to the Christmas contest. We've got all kinds of things to do before we wrap this show up in a couple minutes. So, with our big Christmas contest, you've heard us talk about it. All show long. You've heard us talk about it, hopefully, all month long. Here's the deal. We're giving away a $500 RepcoLite gift card to one lucky winner. And that winner is going to be able to give another $500 RepcoLite gift card to a friend. On top of that, RepcoLite's going to donate $500 in the winner's name to a charity of the winner's choice. You get entered by answering questions that we've asked on air on this show. And we've asked questions all month long so far. And you can find all of those questions at RepcoLite.com when you click the banner on the homepage. That'll take you to the entry form. The questions are there. Each correct answer enters you into the contest. So if you get them all right, you've got four entries into our contest, four chances to win. Now, at the beginning of the show, we replayed all the clues that we've given out so far for the first three questions that we've asked. Now it's time for that last question and clue. Right. Haley, what do you think? What do you think the last question? This is important, so get it right. <laughs> I think we're going to throw out a freebie. It's not going to involve a clue. No clue. No clue. You're not going to need a clue. I've really enjoyed giving out clues. That's been the highlight of my week for the last three weeks. No clue this week. Okay. Well, Merry Christmas, Dan. <laughs> All, right. All right. I'll take the hit. What's the question? No clue. What's what is your favorite paint product? I want to know. What is people... my favorite paint product? Or bum bum bum. Does everybody know what Dan's favorite paint product could be? Anything? <laughs> Ooh, he's got such good taste. That's not where you're no, going, right? No. Anyone? You I as would the like listener to know what their favorite paint product is. What? It could be Repcolite. It could be Benjamin Moore. It could be someone else. Or, that would be dumb. <laughs> if it's somebody else's, you might want to make, make up a Repcolite or a Benjamin Moore product that you love better. So yeah, whatever your favorite paint product is, mm -hmm. all you need to do is go to Repcolite.com, click the banner on the homepage like we've been saying. Fourth question, it's going to say, what is your favorite paint yes, color? You cannot get it wrong. If you need a clue for this, <laughs> there's a problem, and you probably don't deserve to be in the contest. <laughs> so you should be able to fill that out. It's an utter freebie, like Haley said. You can't get it wrong. Get those answers in. We're going to draw a winner on December 26th. Yes. So we're going to enjoy our Christmases. Then on December 26th, we'll draw a winner and we'll contact you that day, right? Yep, I will Haley, be contacting you. I'm going to be on vacation. Haley is going to be doing that. But for any burglars who are listening, I'm going to be home. <laughs> <laughs> I've always read, never announce that you're on vacation on Should social Should you give media. your phone number out as well? Yeah, my address is, and the key is <laughs> under the mat. No, that's not true. If you find our key, we've been looking for one. We've lost it. So we'd love you to leave it by the front door. Anyway, I'll be on vacation. You're going to pull the winner. Yes. And you... I'll reach out and we'll get you those gift certificates. We'll figure out a charity that you want to donate that $500 to and get all of that set up. And then we'll announce the winner officially on the show for everybody to hear coming up in two weeks. All right. Everybody's probably super excited. Everybody's got big plans, big Christmas coming. Do you have big stuff going? Well, we're traveling to my mom's house and then my mother-in-law's house. So it's All a right. lot of travel. It's a lot of driving. A lot Christmas. of driving. I'm going to be sitting home waiting for the burglars who think I'm on vacation. <laughs> got cookies fun. and we're ready to go. Good have deal. A, His name is Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, have a great Christmas. <laughs> we hope everybody out there enjoys it, has a great time, is safe. And we'll see you next week. I'm Dan Hansen. I'm Haley Johnson. Thanks for listening. 